today I'm going to bring to an end the eternal series called Host the Holy Ghost and with a message about dreams, visions and prophecy. Before I go into that, I am one of those guys that have started to admire a whole package things. Uh, those of you who have a car here and you have a, uh, you bought the car and you bought the car with the package, meaning you got the seat warmers, you got the seat coolers, you got the steering wheel warmer, the steering wheel cooler, the back camera, the front camera, all of those perks and things. When, when I remember when I got a car and um, one of my friends here, he got the car for me from the auction. This is when you're on the budget, um, you got the car from the auction. And so uh, I got the car from the auction. I had a person who went and looked at the car and gave me the report back. And he gave me the report back and I asked him for three things. I said, did that car have navigation? Did it have a back camera? And did it have seat warmers? And he called me back. He's like, honestly, he's like, I don't see the navigation. I don't see the back camera and I don't see the seat warmers. And it was a nice car, the car I kind of wanted. I was so, uh, so frustrated with myself. And then a month later, I went to Portland where the car was at, it was being fixed. And as I arrived there, I looked inside and I saw that the car did have the seat warmers. It did have the back camera and it did have the navigation. So I don't know if it, the Lord blinded my friend who wasn't able to see what it was. When I got the car and I started driving, I was like, man, this is so awesome. This was so beautiful. The seat warmers and everything. Then I met a friend who had not only seat warmers, had the seat coolers. I was like, man, why did I dream so little? I should have, you know, I know a car gets you from point A to point B, but honestly, a bicycle can get you from point A to point B. We, don't, we just don't want something in life that gets us from point A to point B. A lot of times, we don't settle for things like that. We want the whole package. Somebody say the whole package. See now you might not be able to afford the seat warmers and the seat coolers and you might be at the season right now where honestly four wheels and it starts and stops is enough and that is completely fine. That is there is no condemnation to those who are driving that. But what I'm referring to is that when you come to Jesus Christ, He offers you salvation and with that salvation He wants to offer you the full package. The full package involves sanctification, it involves a change in life, it involves like we see even healing, it involves like we heard baptism of the Holy Spirit, it involves direction from God, it involves instead of being tormented by demons that you are assisted by God's angels, it involves a whole package. Somebody shout whole package. God doesn't want you to settle for just a small little thing. He wants you to go for the whole thing. Come on somebody. And we as Christians, we don't want to be people who only take the little bit. It's like, well, this gets me to heaven. I don't want to just get to heaven. The Bible says to pray that your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So before I get to heaven, God says, I want you to have a taste of heaven on this earth. No, this earth will never be heaven as long as there are humans and demons and all this stuff. But this earth can be a taste of heaven. Or this earth can be a taste of hell. I don't want to taste hell. I've done it. It doesn't taste good. It's too bitter. I want a taste of heaven. Somebody say amen. Somebody shout whole package. God wants you to have a whole package. Another thing that I want to point to you right now. We're going to talk about today dreams, visions and prophecy. But a lot of times people approach the Bible and they approach Christianity as we would do a buffet in high school. I remember when I was in high school and we went to lunch. And during lunch there was options you know you take the burger you take the fr uh, fries then you take the ketchup and the mayo because you mix the mayo with ketchup to eat the fries with it's a russian disorder thing <laughs> so we look at me like what yeah we're crazy then you take this and you're like no the vegetables the green things now nah, i don't like it and then we take the milk or you take the juice and sometimes people treat the bible the same way they come in and they're like well i like the salvation part the whole holy ghost stuff uh, that's weird i'm not taking that i like this nah don't like that the holiness part you know not living with my girlfriend uh that's not for today i'm rejecting that in jesus name and we take what we like and we reject what doesn't suit us don't treat the bible as a buffet you don't pick and choose 
God wants us to commit our life to this word and to change our life for this word not to change the word so it could suit our life somebody say amen I know I'm preaching already Paul said I want to preach to you the whole counsel of God the whole counsel of God means the whole counsel of God amen we don't pick and choose we take the whole and it makes us whole somebody say amen because I got a lot of people with holes in their life because they're not whole because they're not submitting to the whole counsel of God don't get me started on this rhyming thing amen Acts chapter 2 let's go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 17 and we will read a prophecy that was given by prophet Joel to the last days and if you brought a Bible you can do so or if your phone has enough space to include the Bible ver Bible on your phone you can open that one up verse 17 says the following and it shall come to pass in the last days says God that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my manservants and on my maidservants I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy I will show I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke and sun shall be turned into darkness and moon into blood before the coming of great and awesome day of the Lord and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved come on let's put our hands together for the Lord for this awesome prophecy this prophecy was Peter quoting prophet Joel as a response to what happened on the day of Pentecost. A day of Pentecost was when the Holy Spirit came upon church and great things started to happen. A fire showed up, like physical fire. A wind showed up. It wasn't like a breeze in the heart. It was physical wind and a mighty rushing wind came and they started to speak in other tongues. And people of course thought that they were crazy because the response, the human response to the manifestation of the Spirit of God there's two responses first one is this is nuts this is crazy and the second response is oh my God this is God and that's exactly what happened here people heard them speaking in tongues and some people say OMG God is here and the other people says these guys are local they are drunk I wonder how much they drunk today they are speaking gibberish see every time we approach the issue of tongues or spiritual manifestation a lot of times people have this reaction in them where their mind plays tricks with them and their mind says you crazy for those of you who got baptized in the Holy Spirit when you start speaking in tongues your spirit says this is awesome your mind says you're crazy today we're going to pray for baptism of the Holy Spirit and the little devil that sits right here will tell you run this is nuts what kind of a thing they're speaking you don't understand it there's a lot of things we don't understand that we still practice I don't understand how brown cow can eat green grass and produce white milk I still drink milk half of you here do not understand half of the things on your iPhone you still use it and a lot of you here do not know how to find anything on your computer except the power button you still use it I, let me tell you something no matter what expert you are in whatever field there are areas in your life you're not necessarily very equipped in but you still take advantage of those things never put God in the box of your mental understanding because if he fits there he's not worthy of worship any God I can explain is not worthy to be worshiped come on somebody just because I can't fit an ocean into a cup it doesn't mean I shouldn't be drinking it just because I can't explain God by my mind it doesn't mean I can't experience him and I cannot taste God come on somebody and so maybe even the issue of tongues or the issue of somebody speaking in tongues somebody prophesying people being healed maybe something very foreign to you like that's not how church is supposed to be church shouldn't be clapping people shouldn't be going this and doing that and everything but let me tell you something what we're talking about here is the reality of God 
and don't let your tradition and don't let how you grew up begin to define that don't let that begin to rob you of your experiences with God because that is one of the reasons people don't go to churches today when we're talking about tongues we're talking about something that the Bible talks about Jesus mentioned that first it was Jesus's idea the whole idea of tongues was Jesus's idea he talked about it that his followers will cast out demons most of his followers don't believe in that today they will heal the sick most of their followers today don't do that and he says they will step upon things that are deadly it's not because you go picking up snakes but it will do it by accident and drink anything poisonous and it will not hurt you that's coke and pepsi in jesus name okay that's not the literal translation of course but on the mission fields people would drink things that were deadly and they wouldn't be hurt by it but i want you to see this is how the devil lies to our generation who will throw f-bombs curse people out and they don't think there's anything wrong with that but when the Holy Spirit comes and fills us be with the language we don't understand and we think this is crazy crazy is when you're cussing that's crazy crazy is when every word comes out of your mouth is negative that is crazy crazy is when you look at yourself in the mirror and you call yourself every bad word that is crazy but when the Holy Spirit takes control of your mouth and he speaks things that only your spirit can understand mysteries to God that is not crazy it's crazy to your mind but it's good to your spirit tongues were given for three main reasons the first one is for the personal edification or personal building a lot of people who reject the idea of speaking in tongues they say that you know tongues are only given for the church for some one person to speak in them and somebody else to translate them it's true but first purpose of tongues is so that you personally can build your faith you not only can speak in tongues you can also pray in tongues you can worship in tongues and you can speak to God and God can speak back in your spirit when you pray in tongues you can build your faith when you pray in tongues Paul says I speak in tongues more than anybody else Paul says also that when I speak in tongues my mind is unfruitful but my spirit is praying Paul says also that I pray in tongues I pray with my mind I worship with tongues and I worship with my mind that's why Jesus says God is seeking those who worship him to worship him in spirit and in truth we worship God in truth when we worship God from the position of Calvary but when we worship in the Holy Spirit when we sing with tongues we worship also a worship that's pleasing to God come on somebody amen we are a church that believes in this now this might not this might come off as like way off for some people in our culture but honestly I'm not I'm just gonna be very straightforward to you opinions of people in our culture who many of them are so confused and messed up it's not my standard my standard is the Word of God. The culture came and the culture will go. The trend came and the trend will go. The truth is eternal and we base our life on the truth. Come on somebody. The second purpose of tongues is for public edification or corporate edification. And this only happens when the gift of tongues is accompanied with the gift of interpretation of tongues. Now how this typically is done is when in a setting during quiet time somebody gets up and somebody begins to speak out loud in tongues. It's not a personal time where they talk to God. This is they speak in tongues to the church. Now of course everybody, everybody from us are like what is he saying? When they're done somebody else gets up and gives interpretation of the tongue. Now interpretation is not translation meaning the person giving interpretation doesn't actually know the language they have the same spirit who gives them the meaning of that tongue as the person who is giving that tongue and so that's what that is and it's given to the church the purpose number three for tongues are for unbelievers meaning it's to build the faith of people who are struggling with their faith in God. Sometimes they're unbelievers and sometimes they're actually followers of Christ who just needs a little reassurance. I know this happened in meetings uh, where I was involved and I was praying in tongues and somebody else got up and, and they actually they said that I heard a language that I spoke that I've never learned and so they described what was spoken. I've been met people who did a similar thing on mission fields where they spoke in tongues and people came up to them and said you spoke pure clean 
perfect French and he asked them what did I say he's like I never spoke French and they described he you delivered a message and this is what the message said and the message was encouragement to me and many times that's what tongues will do but it doesn't happen all the time when you speak privately in tongues we love to speak in tongues but that's not the goal amen tongues were never the goal the goal was the power the presence and the purpose of the Holy Spirit tongues is always the bonus because there are people who speak in tongues but don't walk in the power don't know the presence and don't live out their purpose and but we're not one of them somebody say I'm not one of them so looking at this verse I want us to see something on this prophecy in Acts chapter 2 verse 17 the Bible says that in the last days God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh I'm going to make a little observation first is in the last days God is going to wash off the boundaries or the separation first between genders if you read this prophecy you will see that God's Spirit will not come on men only it will also come on women and all the women said the church has been a little bit slow when it comes to recognizing that women are men are equal in the eyes of God and I understand maybe you grew up in a tradition when only men held a microphone and a woman is not allowed and the woman is supposed to be silent in the church which if you put that practically and realistically that means she can't even say hi that's not what the scripture means you took it out of the context and plus that scripture was given to a church in a culture where there was issues in the services and you can't take the pull it out of the scripture pull it out of the culture and make the women be silent I want us to see on the prophecy where in the last days God will pour out the spirit on the women as much as on the man people who say well you know a women shouldn't be talking at church they shouldn't be singing they shouldn't be prophesying they shouldn't be preaching they shouldn't be saving people and people who sometimes even come to our church and I met some people who said I can't go to church if a woman is going to stand up and preach I said you're crazy if you're drowning would you care who gives you a life jacket imagine you're drowning and you say no that's a woman I'm not taking the life jacket God's like fool you're gonna die and it's gonna be your fault you're too picky I don't want woman to feed me with the word of God she fed you 20 years with physical food she didn't kill you you're still alive why don't you trust the woman to deliver the word of God as well what's wrong with you come on somebody Samaritan woman brought the whole city of men to Jesus I'm pretty sure half of them were her ex-boyfriends you know the first people Jesus delivered the news of his resurrection were women so I want to tell you something the gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't belittle women it raises them up outpouring of the Holy Spirit raises women up doesn't put them down amen now we know that God puts apostles and pastors and everything and there's certain certain responsibilities in the family and the and the structure and everything I'm not going to that I'm just talking about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is not limited to a male gender another thing that I see here is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is not limited to a particular class of people for example up to this point prophets in the Old Testament were never from slavery for example there's never been a prophet in the Old Testament who was a slave God did not use in the Old Testament the Spirit of God was limited to a particular class of people when the New Testament came in God says no more limits that meaning whatever class you find yourself in a society I'll touch you there as well that means you don't have to be like someone to be used by the Holy Spirit you don't have to be the class of pastors, bishops, apostles, teachers or even leaders. You can be in the class of a stay-home mom. You can be in the class of a businessman or a businesswoman. You can be in the class in the government. You can be in the class in the industry where they make movies or music. You can be in whatever class and God says my spirit like water will find your class and will fill your class. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is anointing for my class. Somebody say amen. And then there's one more category that God removes the limits from and that is children and adults. We know that in the Old Testament only people at the age of 30 could serve as priests and they could at the particular age step in into the ministry time. In here God says your sons and your daughters. God says your old man and your young man. In the last days the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is going to bring unity between generations. 
unity between generation the wisdom of the old the passion of the young is going to be combined together we are not a church of young people we're not a church of old people we are a church of all people generations are gonna bridge up somebody say amen we are a church where the wisdom of the older generation guides us and the passion of the young generation fuels our drive come on somebody we are a generational church multi-generational church we're not a generation where young people are screaming at old people and old people saying these young people are too loud and the young people say man these two old people are just slow and no, 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 no. we are a generation where we love each generation come on somebody amen that is the outpouring of the holy spirit but i want us to look at this prophecy a little bit more up close at the end of this prophecy if you will read your bible carefully you will see that prophet joel mentions that and everyone who will call on the name of the lord shall be saved meaning that the end goal of the end time revival is salvation of people not just greater manifestation of god's spirit if you're taking notes you can write this down the end goal of the end time revival is more salvations not just more manifestations now manifestations are great and we are as a church we're not afraid of manifestations manifestations is when people fall during prayer i have people sometimes who come up and say you know i don't believe people falling where is that in the bible and i said did you read the bible bible says we become catchers of men how will you be catchers of men if they don't fall <laughs> of course that's not a literal translation of the word catchers of men but it proves the point we're not afraid of manifestations manifestations is people raising their hands people crying people being expressive in worship manifestations is when demon leaves and sometimes person falls we're not afraid of manifestations but manifestations are not the goal of revival the goal of revival is everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved that's why you see like even our baptisms and the first service that we had people gave their life to Christ you know last conference that we had each service we had about a hundred people that gave their life through the whole conference our Easter service our goal at Good News Church at Hungry Generation is not just so that we have manifestations but when the manifestations are over that we see people give their lives to Christ and follow Jesus come on somebody come on somebody any saved people we have in this house this morning the Bible says let the redeemer of the Lord say so if you are redeemed say something if you are redeemed say something turn to your neighbor say I am redeemed turn to your other neighbor say I am saved say and I know it hallelujah number two I want you to write down not only salvation is the goal but for the signs to happen on earth wonders must happen in heaven the bible says in here before it talks about salvation it says that god will show wonders in heaven and signs on earth signs are miracles and we want them to happen on earth somebody say amen we want people to get out of the wheelchairs we want blind eyes to see we want deaf ears to be opened we want lame to walk we want the dead to be raised we want blood problems to be cured we want people who have problem like i shared um, today on the first service the lady who had a cr cracked foot and through the live stream last week she was healed in our ministry we want signs on earth somebody say amen but god gives us a secret if you want to see god move on earth you have to see God move in heaven in heaven there is three heavens there's the first heaven is what you see the sky the second heaven is the invisible realm the third heaven is actually God's abode where God's live and so the second heaven is the spiritual warfare that's why many times there is a battle going on in the heaven lease and when we break through the second heaven we see God's grace come down on earth and we begin to see signs on earth that's why as a local church and as believers we must become understanding why we pray guys we don't pray because God is deaf 
we don't pray because God is not interested we are praying not always and not only for God we are praying because there is also a realm that does not want God's kingdom to prosper and advance on this earth and when we pray we push through that realm we break the grip of that realm we break the principalities and powers and God's will becomes manifest on this earth Satan can stop us from receiving God's answers therefore he will do whatever he can to stop us from praying our prayers everything we have right now is a result of prayers we prayed yesterday everything we'll have tomorrow will be a result of the prayers we pray today that's why Moses went up the mountain and held up his hands like this but Joshua he went down the mountain and he was seeing the signs on the earth because Moses was performing wonders in the heavens Jesus says whatever you bind in here you bind it in there meaning there's a connection between what's happening in the spiritual realm and what manifests in the natural realm if you have a situation that the lawyers and the doctors and the therapists and the connections and the degrees cannot solve get on your knees if you cannot get the white house on your side make sure you get the white throne on your side God of heavens can shift the spiritual realm the shift the spiritual realm somebody say shift somebody say shift and when there is a shift in the spiritual realm it's a matter of time and things change in the natural when you win the battle on your knees you can get up and you know that you know that you know it's a matter of time and things will change in your finances it's a matter of time and things will change in your family your son can still be dr drinking smoking and, and and sleeping around but you're looking at him you say listen the devil's already been defeated you are working on your testimony right now because God is bringing up the answer somebody say amen <laughs> hallelujah morning prayer Monday to Friday five o'clock is not because people have a sleeping insomnia it's because people have a dream and because we have an enemy and the victory is assured the reason why healings happen everywhere I go to preach God heals people every service we have here somebody is getting saved some people will get saved today probably one of you the reason why this is happening it's not because somehow out of nowhere there were years and years of prayers these carpets have been soaked in prayer not once with tears and there was no answer it seemed like but remember God will always answer prayer maybe not right away he will answer it no prayer that was ever offered at this church was evaporated the files were not lost in heaven these prayers are still in heaven and God is beginning to pour out the cup and it started to drip and I'm asking each one of you let's send some more let's send some more prayers up there I'm asking all of you today listen maybe you can cut back just a little bit on your sleeve if you can make it to Pasco do it at your home but spend time with God where you create wonders in heaven and then you will see signs on earth Come on somebody let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus lastly is the way revival comes is through dreams visions and prophecy somebody say dreams visions somebody say prophesy dreams visions and prophecy that's the way revival comes now we understand that this is actually the three ways the Spirit of God communicates to us and through us dreams is when you get a dream dreams come really from three sources from demons especially if you watch a lot of horror stuff you will get nightmares second one is from pizza or hard work and the third one is from God so not everything that that you dream of is from God you have to keep that in mind especially usually you can ask yourself this question what is this dream from God I would ask this an hour before you went to sleep what did you do will tell me 50% whether this was from God or not because if, if you were watching some some gothic gr crazy stuff on TV and you got a dream probably it's not from Jesus and stuff it's, it's from that TV show 
but dreams the second one is visions visions is when you are awake and God gives you a picture of somebody or something or something of your life visions and the third one is prophecy prophecy is when you speak something that you hear God say it doesn't always have to say thus says the Lord it doesn't always have to predict or create the future sometimes it could be uh, something of exhortation and, and an encouragement but prophecy is we hear God say and we just repeat that now today I want to look at these three things in the conclusion as not just a way Holy Spirit uses us for others but how Holy Spirit uses dreams visions and prophecy for us in our own life the first one is dream write this down dream is when God shows me something dream is when God shows me something he wants to do God always did that he came to Abraham and he showed him the sky he says these are your descendants it was God's dream for Abraham God came to him and says look at the sand you see when you're when you're excited look at the sky when you're discouraged you will look at the sand and he says and when you look at the sand even your discouragement state you will see your descendants because every piece of sand is your descendants God showed him a dream God showed a dream to Joseph at the young age he says that people will come and the people will honor you and that you will become an answer to people God showed a dream to Pharaoh how things will happen God showed a dream to Gideon how he's going to be a mighty man of valor God gave a dream to David that he's going to rule and lead his people God communicates through dreams dreams are important you have to understand this never criticize a dreamer because soon you might be working for them non-dreamers usually work for the dreamers the brothers of Joseph attacked Joseph you know what they called him they gave him a nickname the dreamer in a matter of few years they were looking for employment from the dreamer the dreamers changed the world do you know who made the change in the world a dreamer Joseph the non-dreamers actually hurt the world I'll rather be the dreamer the hardest part about ministry is not to do the Sunday services the hardest part about ministry is not to preach a sermon it's to constantly keep a dream alive through the mundane regular routine the hardest part about business is not to serve your customers is to keep a dream of a bigger business while you are stuck in that area or stage of your life right now the hardest part about family is not just to raise your kids it's to keep a dream for your kids alive when you see them going through these stages and growing and changing slowly dreaming is a very hard thing to do the best thing to do about dream is not to try to come up with a dream is to ask the Holy Spirit to show you his I'm not asking today that you sit down go on Bahamas and get yourself a little massage and go into the beach and you just begin to imagine whatever you want in your life I'm not talking about that if you come up with that you better have enough resources and willpower to make that come to pass because you're gonna have to be the engine if you're the brains you're gonna have to be the engine behind that dream I'm talking about a dream when you get on your knees and you say Lord where do you see my business Lord where do you see my career Lord where do you see my my family Lord where do you see my ministry Lord where do you see this thing that you gave me a dream God where do you see this and God removes the veil and shows you it scares you first God shows you his dream it will always benefit his kingdom it will always promote his name and it will always benefit through you so many people and as a result bonus you'll get blessed as well when I was 16 and we were just I was about a six months a youth pastor now to give you a little background is that before me there was two other youth pastors the first one was there for six months he quit the second one was there for uh, six months had a beef with the pastor and he left and so I was the third candidate I was no I was never God's first option in anything and uh, and I don't take that offensively offensively nor will probably you be because the people who were God's first option usually decline so there's always hope for us thank you Jesus and so I was asked to be by my pastor to oversee this little flock of cousins that's what it was it was just our cousins six months into it things were really really difficult we were renting Desert Stream Church and um, got the story short 
my parents picked us up. I was a youth pastor who had his own chauffeur to call my parents because I, I had no license. We went to Winko to get some groceries and I was so disappointed and discouraged with how things were going and nobody was listening to me and I had nothing to say and my English was very difficult and I remembered we had no cell phone so I planned when I'm going to get home I'm going to call our pastor and tell him that I quit. I've tried and I failed. And right there as I'm sitting in the van, this Chrysler red van, seven seats, looking at the Winko store, I would say first time I heard God's voice. And he said, look at this store. And as I looked at the store, I felt in my heart, God paint a picture that as big as this warehouse is, that's how big one day your church is going to be. And God said, you see people walking in there and nobody's dragging them. Nobody's giving them flyers to go to grocery store. They all are driven because they know there is food and they know they're hungry. And God says, the time is coming where it's not going to be flyers or TV that's going to be getting people here. It's going to be a rumor that God has visited his people with bread. And 16 years of age, not speaking any English confused about my calling not sure what God wanted me to do but God showed me a picture it captured my heart I knew it wasn't something that I was coming up on my own because I didn't have that in my mind I didn't want to do ministry I wanted to quit but God had a different plan I never made the call to my pastor and I never once quit I've thought quitting many times but when I decide to quit I go to Winko I park my car there and I say God you told me I don't pray to fill this sanctuary. I pray for my dream. In my dream, I close my eyes and I see people getting out of wheelchairs. When I close my eyes, I see people standing with medical reports and testifying of the healing power of God. Because at the age of 16, this is the promise God has made to me. He says that the church is not just going to be great programs, great callers of people who are ministering and amazing music and a fabulous sermons. It's going to be spiritual realities that honestly atheists, agnostics, Muslims, Buddhists cannot deny and say, you know, something is different about this place. I have that dream. Do you have a dream? Some of you have a dream that you're going to run a million dollar company. Some of you have a dream that you'll be a governor of this state. Some of you have a dream that God will elevate your business and you'll be able to build hospitals all around the world. Some of you have a dream that the work you work in right now, you will be the boss in that place. You have a dream but sometimes God's dreams, they're so radical. They're so conflict with reality that we say this is too crazy. But listen, if Walt Disney, if Martin Luther, if these men had dreams, you have God living inside of you and he showed you he will make it happen he will be the force behind the dream somebody say I have a dream <laughs> dreams lead to second thing and that is vision vision dream is God shows vision is I see somebody say I see what does that mean that mean that you shift from a dream of what God wants to do in your life to a vision of how you see your life now. Vision becomes the lens, the paradigm, the filter, the glasses through which now you look at your future, you look at yourself and you look at your business, your family or your health. The problem is this is where people get stuck at because they think when God gave them a dream, God will make that happen. See when God gave you a dream, you conceived it is your job to grow that baby for nine months until nothing will be different on the outside. People will notice until about a few months when you hold on to God's dream, people begin to notice, you know what, something is different about you. I don't know what it is, I can't put my finger on it, but you're different. You work different, you talk different, you're optimistic. I mean, you went through exactly the same thing I went through, but your head is up. Something is different about you. You're like, I'm pregnant. pregnant you're a guy I know weird huh I'm pregnant with business I'm pregnant with marriage how did you get pregnant when I received I conceived when I received what God said I conceived with what God said oh Jesus somebody say I receive somebody say I conceive see when you have a dream what God shows you 
it goes in your heart it becomes something a part of you this is where it becomes a vision the problem with many people is they have miscarriage what I mean by miscarriage is that the reality comes after dream the people come after dream the haters come after dream the doctor's report come at the dream their own doubts come at their dream everything comes and attacks as it was with Joseph so when Mary got pregnant Joseph didn't understand people didn't understand everything comes alongside and then you feel like if I just give up and live a normal life everything will get better listen your life will never get better because you give up on your dream you will carry inside of you an experience of defeat that you will never be able to shake it off of yes you will work from nine to five yes your bills will be paid for yes you will not be due or overdue on your mortgage but there will be inside of you knowing God has something more but you committed abortion but you had miscarriage but you gave in to the reality Bible says humble yourself under the mighty hand of God but you humble yourself under the mighty hand of your circumstances you humble yourself under the mighty hand of your doctor's report but you humble yourself under the mighty hand of the collectors you humble yourself under the mighty hand of the economy that is happening right there under the mighty hand of your past experiences when you give up on your vision you lose faith when you lose faith you lose partnership with the Holy Spirit when you lose partnership with Holy Spirit you will always lack motivation and discipline and the problem is not that you're not motivated the problem is not that you're disciplined it's just you don't have a vision people without vision only few of us are like extra disciplined the rest of us without vision we are lazy you want to get disciplined in your life get a dream turn it into a vision because it will turn it into faith faith will turn it into partnership with holy spirit and as a result your life will have discipline your life will have restrainings your life will have guardrails your life will have a sense of purpose there will be a reason you won't look from Fridays because every day will be a Friday you will not need a vacation because you will live a life that you desire to live not because everybody pays you good and treats you good because you have a vision and you know whatever you're going through is not gonna last come on somebody come on let's put our hands together for Jesus people without vision are slaves to their reality let me say that again people without vision are slaves to their reality we abolish slavery in America but some of you you volunteered into slavery every single day and your life is no better than any slave in the world the only difference is you don't have a physical taskmaster you put one over your life spiritually because if you live without vision you live without faith if you live without faith you're a slave you're a slave to whatever your boss decides to do you're a slave to whatever your spouse's attitude is on morning you are a slave to however your kids behave you're a slave to however your body reacts you're a slave to what happens with your car you're a slave to everything and anything except God dream vision and third one prophesy see when you have a vision it's how you see yourself now God wants you to say it sometimes you have to prophesy because you have faith sometimes you have to prophesy to get faith <laughs> come on somebody sometimes you prophesy because man it's bubbling inside of you and sometimes it's empty on the inside and when you speak the truth the faith comes along I speak God's word not because I feel it I speak God's word because it's right and sometimes I feel it later my feelings will come later prophesy meaning why does God wants us to prophesy because a word your mouth is the rudder uh, like of the ship if you have a car your mouth is the same thing as a steering wheel of the car if you want to move your car you don't come out of the car and go to each tire and push each tire in the right direction right that's a lot of work that's for someone else to do what you would do and I would do is if you want to move your car you, you don't push each tire you don't try to lift the car and push it in the right direction you get inside of the car you start the the car and then you turn the steering wheel and then the car will go in the direction of the steering wheel 
see your body and your life will always go in a direction of your words dominant words constantly coming out of your mouth if you want to defeat your emotions if you want to defeat negative thoughts change how you speak because the way the bad thoughts get aborted in your mind is by your speech that's why Jesus in the wilderness did not repeat what the devil said he simply opened his mouth didn't say what he felt he said what was written and whatever things that were coming against him they were cut you feel doubt you just open your mouth don't repeat doubt but say something that God's word says about you and you will see how that doubt gets cut right away God wants you to speak what he says what he shows and what you see in your spirit not what you feel not what you're going through and not what the doctors have said not what your friends have said not what you have said but what he has said somebody say prophesy somebody say prophesy prophesy to your kids don't curse them Joey came home drunk he said you know what one day you'll be coming full of the Holy Ghost and he goes duh, 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 duh. you say and you will be an evangelist and if you keep on talking I'll keep on adding prophecies to you right now in Jesus name your husband has a gambling problem when he comes in you don't call him you such a loser he said one day you're going to be preaching the gospel you will lead 10 home groups for the glory of God you will be giving more money that you're gambling and star God will steal now you will see but if I don't tell him he is wrong he'll never know listen honey he knows he's wrong he can't stop it and you aligning with the devil doesn't help him but when you align with Holy Spirit and you prophesy I remember when my mother you know looked at my brother and my brother would you know do things that were ungodly and, and she, she, at first she was telling him oh you're such a drunk you're such a this and this and that and I was like mom it's obvious he's drunk everybody knows that you don't need to tell him again what he doesn't know is he's a preacher oh he was so irritated and then she was she loved doing it just I think to irritate him <laughs> you want to offend you want to hurt people that are struggling prophesy <laughs> you're gonna hurt the devil inside of them you want your business to prosper prophesy into your business the Bible says that the weak say I am strong the Bible says let the poor say I am rich you want to see change prophesy don't be like the the priests who could not have children angel came drew him a picture says you're gonna have a son and he says that's not so possible that's not possible and he kept on talking and God says listen you're gonna mess up the miracle so he put a duct tape over his mouth and the guy couldn't speak for the next months because your prophecy if it's not prophecy you can actually kill the miracle inside of your life your miracle what God showed you what you believe in can be destroyed if you constantly keep confessing the wrong thing you get possession through confession how do you get salvation you believe with your heart confess with your mouth you don't get salvation by walking around and confessing the opposite of what you believe you get possession through your confession come on somebody somebody say prophesy I want to speak into your life right now that you're gonna succeed in Jesus name that you are more than a conqueror in Jesus name you will live and not die in Jesus name some of you you will run million dollar companies you will build orphanages you will give cars away you will give homes away I speak in Jesus mighty name that some of you you will have a doctor's report what is this you will have a doctor's report that will say no more cancer no more sexual transmitted diseases you will have there are people in this room who are fighting a court battle right now I want to speak life to what as death is right now you're facing right now an issue maybe in some kind of a case with lawyers and everything I just want to speak life where there is death I want to speak light where there is darkness in Jesus name that you will come out of that situation you will not drown in this Red Sea God didn't bring you to it to 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 drown you here he brought you to this and he will bring you through this in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name I want us to rise to our feet right now Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.